one. And we're back, day two uh, of the emerging weekend. I'm joined here with my partner, Marissa Kogan, AKA the Mad Dog, uh, who will be taking her rugby and broadcasting talents for a degree up at Syracuse this coming fall. Uh, good to have you back. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back for the second day. I can't wait to see a few more games today. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let me just do this. We'll move this over here. So this is today's roster for Corning. We're obviously uh, pretty familiar with the red and black jersey, so shouldn't have a problem calling that out. But um, if you want to work that side of it, um, or whichever, whichever you're more comfortable with. If you want me to do this, or and I'll do the Morris. Either one. Okay. So, okay, just working out some, uh, some technical uh, questions here between myself and my colleague, but we have another beautiful day out here in Clinton Township at Bunt Park. Uh, many thanks to the Eisenhardt family who worked very closely with the township and the rec department to get us these terrific fields today um, and just a w another wonderful day of rugby. Uh, today's clash, the first one up, will be the Morris Emerging versus Corning, New York. Uh, what we saw was a good side coming out of central or the southern tier of New York yesterday. Yeah, I definitely think that based off of what I watched yesterday with Corning, they are one of the more competitive teams that I've seen this weekend. And I'm very interested to see how they line up against Morris's younger U16 side, the Molly crew they have playing. I think it'll be a great game. I agree. And I was just looking at their roster and something that I didn't notice yesterday is this is pretty a pretty young team. It's uh, it's the predominance are uh, juniors and sophomores uh, with only three graduating players. So, you know, they, they put on a pretty good show for, uh, you know, having the underclassmen and the juniors that they uh, that they have. So pretty, uh, pretty well schooled. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have a great future because they have a lot of strong players who will be there for a few more years. 100 percent, 100 percent. Uh, nice folks on the coaching staff as well. Had a quick chat with them about the roster prior to, so no changes from yesterday, no wholesale changes from yesterday. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get you the, the names uh, associated to the jerseys well today. Uh, we have a guest referee from uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Morris, who is actually here. His wife is on assignment with work. Morris joined her uh, and has been plying his talents uh, in the uh, refing capacity in the United States uh, in the past month or so. He's also was telling us he's an employee of uh, the RFU, which is the, uh, uh, the governing body for English rugby. Uh, he does training, uh, throwing training for um, the universities around the country, as well as uh, certifying coaches at level one and two in uh, southern England. So uh, glad to have somebody of uh, that caliber running uh, the center of the pitch for us today. Mm -hmm. Definitely interesting. We had some good refs yesterday, new ref today, fresh blood. It's always good to see lots of people getting involved, getting a chance to showcase their talents in all these different ways. I agree. And, and you know, I, I think you bring up a good point. Yesterday's uh, officiating was pretty darn good. <laughs> we we're getting a high sign from Coach Bill Dobbs, who seems uh, has a bit of pep in his step for today's games, as well as uh, his... Uh, compadre uh, Mike Eisenhart, who will be joining us on this uh, side of the sideline shortly. So we're 12.05. Okay. Uh, we are a 12.05 kickoff, a little bit delayed to the ID camp, and there's the first whistle bringing the captains together. I think we should be good. Oh, I didn't know if you wanted to read it off. Oh, you can do that. So uh, let, let me get started here with the Morris lineup, and then uh, Marissa, why don't you take us through Corning? Okay. Uh, so, um, starting at uh, number one, we have Anna uh, and playing the uh, loose head. Uh, Abby Barati playing hooker. Sienna Miller at the tight head spot. Tegan Mendel at four. Maria Wise at five. Charlotte Beater playing six. And we have um, Aaron O'Brien, uh, who is a late ad. Glad to see her back out there at the number seven position. So, uh, a little bit of an ankle injury that she's going to tough it out and play through with today. Kayla Ronsky playing the eight and had a really good game there yesterday. Abby Cirillo in the nine, same thing. Amanda Corfin in the 10 jersey, happy to see that. Sosi Honing at the uh, 11. Maddie Gonsalves at uh, 12. Her partner uh, at the outside center, Nora Landerman. And then Rowan DeWitt on the far wing. And Fiona Cusack playing that 15 role, that uh, very important fly, uh, fly aft role. Uh, pardon, pardon me, fullback role. All right. Um, some of the numbers don't line up on the Corning uh, jerseys, so I'm just going to read their names. 
So we have Sylvie Bilkari, Ember Moses, Jalen Butler, Cadence Ector, Zoe Harmer, Kylie Richards, Ella Coster, Kendra Close, Keegan Rhodes, Catherine Uyang, Julia Gridley, Amanda Stevens, Josie Lober, Tori Holmes, and Michaela Reed as our starting 15. Of Good. those names, only three are seniors. That's amazing. So uh, a young side out there, but definitely well coached and well drilled. And, uh, you know, you see some good rugby IQ in that uh, blue hoop jersey. Uh, so action has started as we uh, were reading off the rosters. Uh, it's going uh, line out in favor of Corning. Definitely a close game to begin with. Play hasn't moved much too far away from the 50 so far. 100% hard charging run here. Breaking through all the Morris lines is number 12. That would be Amanda Stevens. She is finally slowed down uh, just past the 10 meter, uh, but Corning moving the ball really well back there, Marissa. They're definitely using the whole field to their advantage, bringing it out to the wings, and it's working for them. Absolutely. That's what we were talking about yesterday. In some instances, yes. In some instances, no, using the whole field, right? Mm -hmm. There yeah, were quite absolutely. a few teams yesterday who had the tendency to bunch, and yeah. it was very noticeable yeah. in the way they played. So I'm glad to see both these teams so far using the full width of the field. Looks like they're going to scrum it down on the far end of the field due to a knock-on by Corning. Just be, almost dead between the 22 and the 10. Uh, so let's get a look-see here. So enough good pressure for Morris to get the ball turned over, or at least uh, the attempt to get into a, uh, a, a scrummaging position here. Uh, so let's see what Morris can bring to the table. Cirillo's got the ball nice and easy. She uh, opts to pick and go off the back and then dishes out to her 10, Corfin. Corfin looks for Sosie Honing. Honing with uh, sleek hands right there is able to hold off, and there's Corfin sealing it off. Uh, nice dish there to Ronsky. Ronsky takes it in for five hard yards. And Cirillo's there to recycle again. Beater takes one out of the air right there. Bit of a hospital pass. She's able to dish it off. And it looks like to Sydney Sabilla. And here we go. Tegan Mendel doing a great job there with some hard charging, trundling run. Uh, ball is cycling out the far side. Aaron, uh, uh, Aaron O'Brien right there on a nice carry. Ball's recycled. Nice work on the attack here from uh, the red and black jersey. Yep. You can definitely see that Morris is using their pods, always support there during the rucks. You can see there they had two people in that ruck, and Corning chose not to contest, but they were ready nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Corning is opting to keep their flare, uh, players, you know, in that uh, in that kind of uh, uh, attacking uh, attacking defense position as opposed to committing to the rucks there. That's you know, it's a different school of thought and sometimes very effective. So Anna taken down pretty hard right at the 50 and she's lost the ball forward. Uh, there's a not releasing penalty. So it looks like there's going to be a toe and go right on the 50 for Corning to restart. They're going to choose to kick it and it will not find touch. Whose hands will it find? Sosie Honing. Uh, Sosie very steady back there, good hands. Uh, she's able, big counter ruck there from Anna. Uh, we're losing a Charlotte little. Charlotte Bitar trying to break through the Corning line. It appears she was driven out. Am I correct? I think so. Looks like they're setting up for a line out. Unfortunately, that's right where our vision stops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We wish you the best. <laughs> okay. Well taken by Corning. Slicing run from the in, uh, the outside center. Corning is stopped just north of the 22, the 10, uh, looking to go wide, running a little across the field. And uh, Morris is already there. Absolutely contained, thankfully. Strong rucking by Corning. Marissa, I'm really liking this Corning uh, attacking shape. Uh, you know, it, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty deadly. Both these teams have definitely showed out this morning. They are recovered from yesterday's multitude of games and looks like they are both ready to play because this has been a great game so far. Outside center sh shakes a tackle. She makes some big, big yards here, just north of the five. Man, this is just some punishing running coming out of Corning. You can tell that Corning is looking for these openings and trying to use them. It's absolutely, and they're looking for that early game score, right? They, they, they want to set a precedent here. So, but they've got runners from depth, right? And they've got nice flat passes, making it easy to catch and handle. And then these players are making those uh, those heavy ground, heavy yards. Great offloads as well. 
Morris defense so far bending but not breaking as we like to say uh, and scrambling well. Let's see if we can get that line speed. Uh, we've got knock on. Oh, uh, pardon me. It's a whistle for an injury. We're going to be looking for uh, the sir was saying that it looked like it was a, uh, a head knock. Uh, so this will definitely require what they call an HIA, uh, which is the head injury assessment uh, and protocol, which is super important. As we know, uh, you know, concussions are not something to be uh, taken lightly these days. Absolutely. So both teams are going to take a little break. And sh hopefully shortly, our, um, our Morris injured player will be well on her way. And the game will resume with a ball not too far from Corning's try line. Yeah, unlucky, uh, unlucky knock to the head. Uh, you know, that stoppage of play, I think, was, you know, not, not to, you know, take anything away from the injured player, but uh, a lucky moment for uh, Morris to kind of take the, uh, the wind out of those uh, attacking sails of that blue hoop jersey because, man, they were looking threatening. They had great momentum making Absolutely. their way down the field. They they are very close to scoring. If they can keep that perseverance up, they definitely knew what they were doing and trying to break in through those lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hard runners, like we were saying, hard runners coming from depth, sympathetic passes, right? Nice flat pass right into the hands. It's not a rocket that you've got to bobble and work with that then you cause a knock on with. Really, really well done and, and calm under pressure, which is the other component, right? Sometimes you get into that uh, that 22 and that try line fever kicks in and that's where the mistakes happen. Yep. No, but both teams so far are looking great this morning. I, I can already tell that this is going to be a very good and competitive game. Absolutely. Maria Wise was uh, the individual who unfortunately took the knock to the head. Uh, she is thankfully walking off under her own power. We'll see who got in uh, as a substitution for Maria. She's uh, checked out uh, for uh, for the head knock. Looks like they're going to restart with a scrum. So we had an opportunity to chat with uh, the sir before the game for quite a bit and uh, really liked his approach to uh, managing the game. Uh, safety was a huge component for him, even talking to us about the goalpost, the temporaries making sure there were pads there. Big attacking format for, uh, platform here from uh, Corning. They're working that. They look like they've rounded that corner. Yeah, yep. and they're going to dot it down. And I loved what I was seeing after they passed. Players were looping to be in support, to continuing on that side of the field, just in case there needed to be one more pass or two more passes. That is brilliant rugby right there. That is the only way they were going to make it that far down the field. So we're going to start out with a try. By Corning. Did you get a number on that runner? Uh, I, I want to say it was either the full back or the far side wing. Uh, so let's take a look there. And then I think the kicking duties are going to the inside center, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think I saw a 12 on the back of that jersey. Apologies, folks. A little tough to see uh, at the distance. We'll, uh, we'll try to get you better on the names here for the visiting side. So Corning has come to play. I definitely think that now that one team is on the board, we're going to see a lot more push by Morris because they want to get that back. And I think the motivation on both teams so far for this game is going to make it very good rugby. Absolutely. And the conversion is good. So that seven zip to Corning, that kick was actually, if I'm not mistaken, by the winger number 11. I'm pretty sure number 11 was kicking for them yesterday, so I I think that that would be correct. That would be Julia Gridley. And uh, if... So it sounds like number 14 was our try scorer. So the, the other wing uh, was our try scorer, and if you want to grab a name on that. Tori Holmes, Jr., from Corning. Here we go, uh, another slicing run coming down. Great run, breaking through Morris lines, and finally right here from the fullback. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay, Morris scrambling their defense. Their big caterpillar rucking going on there. Penalties going towards Morris. Lucky moment for them, uh, not releasing uh, and, uh, and taking the wind uh, out of another attacking sail right here. All right, Morris is going to restart play right inside the 50. 
and they will find touch right past the 50. Cirillo puts the boot to it, finds touch, uh, and we're getting set for what I believe is Morris's first put in on the uh, lineout. Pretty sure this is their first lineout. I think the other two have been throwing so pardon far. Me. Yes, I believe so. So, I, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm seeing some kind of shocked faces on the Morris players right now. I don't think they expected the, uh, the tempo and intensity that Corning is bringing in the first five to seven minutes of this game. I am very happy with the way that both teams are playing so far, though. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely tell that both of them have their energy regained. Yesterday, teams were getting a little tired, and they're both motivated. This was not supposed to be an easy game for either team. Okay, so that was almost a fireball, but well taken by O'Brien. Uh, she's able to settle the ball, and Morris is on the attack. Uh, and players down, it looks like Rowan DeWitt on the far side. It's dished out by our nine. It's going into the hands, the uh, competent hands of uh, Starkweather. Starkweather rolls it back. Cirillo covers. Uh, there goes O'Brien on a big run again. She's a little bit isolated. Support does get there in the form of Starkweather. And then ball is played back by our uh, hooker, Barati. A knock-on is going to be called uh, in favor of Morris, it appears. We're going to have another scrum pretty close to the 50. I would say besides the the cycling and the try that was already scored a few minutes ago, the play between these teams has been pretty much kept within the 10s so far, which just shows you how competitive and how matched these two teams are. Absolutely. I, I think you're right. I think Morris's turn has, has clicked into the game. You know, I, I think uh, the first five minutes were certainly uh, – uh, in Corning's favor uh, because they just came out on the front foot, uh, but Morris is starting to stabilize. Abby Cirillo with the pick and go and then dishes off to her 10, Corfin, who's slicing through runners. There's, uh, we've got uh, Starkweather there on the support. Anna, uh, pardon me, uh, Kayla picks up and carries, gets a couple of yards, dishes out, Beater takes it off the chest and knocks it forward, the arms up. Yep. Two knocks right there, so going to go based off of the first one and it's going to be a scrum to Corning pretty much on the opposite end of the 50 that they just scrummed down on like a minute ago. So I, I, I like the tempo that Morris is bringing. I think they just need to notch it down one right in order to be able to hold on to those making sure we're getting good passes out to first receiver. Yep you cannot forget the fundamentals when it comes to having your head in the game. You need to be motivated yes but you also need to remember that you're still playing rugby you still need to have some of those skills that are so dire in the game corning on the attack holding on uh pretty stalwart defense from uh, the red and black jersey but uh corning holding on to possession they're uh making a, a hard run up the gut into contact and uh, the counter rucking and it looks like kayla ronsky's able to turn it over nice poach from ronsky and Morris is back on the attack. I was very surprised by that because both teams have had such strong rucks so far this game, really defending their ball. So that poach was a little bit of a surprise to me. Yeah, and not easy to do against this Corning side. And uh, hats off to Ronsky on that work there. There's Beater with a sympathetic pass. She's able to make some yards, get uh, control of the ball, and uh, get the yards that we're looking for. Oh, and it's poached. There wasn't enough support there. Corning was able to win that ruck. So now Morris will have to reset and get in a straight line for defense. This is a back and forth. Wow, this is terrific. Uh, if, if you hear some pauses in the game, I think it's because we're kind of sitting here open mouth slack jawed <laughs> as we're watching the, the action. <laughs> I know. This is a great way to start the It's morning, right? This is the great way to start the morning today. This is a very good game of rugby by both teams so far. It's a back and forth. And I think you, you, you put it right. It's not even between the 22s. It's between the 10s right now. Yeah. I definitely like I like a competitive game. I like when both teams are even because it's not very entertaining to watch one team just blow out another. There's no suspense. You know, and th that's kind of the philosophy of this weekend, right? This is what this weekend is built on. Absolutely. Ex exactly that. All right. Corning is going to pass it out, trying to get it wide. Corning on the attack, a little bit of loose ball in the ruck there. It looks like they'll be able to contain being hard contested, and the penalty is going to go Morris's way for an offside. 
Let's see what Cirillo opts to do. Cirillo decides for the quick toe and go. And She's looking for space. That was smart because half of Corning's team was turned around walking back to their mark. Absolutely. Yeah, take advantage of that, that back turn, right? Always go the back pedal on that 10 meter. Absolutely. That is just something that you have to learn. The more you play the game, the more you'll realize some teams will take advantage of that momentary lapse in playing. Hey, we just saw it again because that second penalty on an offside and Cirillo took advantage of that, you know, that hoop jersey turned around on her and she's able to make some hard yards there. Some very strong tackling by Morris in the far end of the field. Ball's turned over. It's going Corning, just north of their 22. Corning settling the ball. They Oh, pick and go is turtled stopped. back and dropped onto the pile. That's a favorite of Coach Dobbs's right there. Morris has read these pod plays of theirs right off the ruck. They're just going to give it to a pack of two or three strong forwards. Oh, turnover. Stripped, and, and it I looked like Sienna Miller. I think that was Tegan. Oh, was that Tegan? Okay, Tegan Mendel on the carry. She's having a game today, folks. It's number five, so I'm pretty sure that was Tegan. Great run and useful way to react to that turnover. They are so close to the try line. I think you want to consider other options in the pick and go when you're north or in your 22 there because uh, that's the, you know, as Coach Dobbs and Coach Michael tell you, that's the easiest thing to defend. Corning is very bunched right now. If they get it out to Nora or Sosi right here on this end, they will have no problem. And it looks like Morris was able to push it in. So tight in that far corner, Morris dots down for five. This is going to be a pretty challenging kick, and let's see who they elect to uh, take these duties. I did not see who actually scored the try. So many players were on the ground over there trying to support each other. Yeah, nor did I, and uh, you know, hopefully we can find out after the game, but let's call that a team effort. Absolutely. And what I liked about this try was there was a shift in momentum here, right? Uh, you know, Morris started just south of their 50 and started working it down. They took advantage. I should say specifically, Cirillo took advantage of two penalties with backs turned and made some hard yards, which really put him in that scoring position. And there was a momentary turnover, but they got the ball back, and that just shows how persevering this Morris team is. They were hungry. They wanted that try, and they worked for it. Well said. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I, I think Morris is feeling better about this first half, but there's certainly the, those, those faces out there belie focus. Uh, and uh, I think that's what we're going to continue to see here. All right, kick is good, and that was Abby Cirillo on the kick. That so was an amazing kick. That will turn the score even again. It's a tie game. 7-7. Seven, seven. Nice well into the first half. Uh, yeah, I, we're hearing uh, her compatriots uh, congratulate her on a kick. And, and folks, for, for those at home who are watching and maybe, um, you know, don't know, like what happens is where you dot the ball down in the try zone or, or a.k.a. the end zone for our gridiron fans is where you bring the ball back from uh, 10 meters and kick for the extra points. So when it's dotted down in the corners, ideally you want it dotted down and under the uprights. Which is why you'll see players get into the zone but still try to run towards the middle as much as they can to make that kick easier because those two points really mean a lot. At, they win games. I mean, they end up winning games. So And then, you know, point further to where that ball's kicked from, super challenging kick for any kicker, right? And Absolutely. Cirillo slots it. Great running by, I think that was Emily Starkweather. Beat her on another hard carry there, and support is there. Uh, Cirillo's able to recycle. Anna Y gets it. She's making more hard yards here. She's breaking wow. through. 15 hard yards right there, folks. Nice work. Oh, a little bit of a gator roll there, getting out of the ruck. High ball well fielded by Corfin. And they're going uh, to Gonsalves out. out to Landerman. Landerman unselfish, but un unfortunately unable to get off a clean one. Luckily, Amanda Corfin was able to, able to get there and try and support. Unfortunately, not enough, and it will be a turnover right in front of us. Wow. Corning will get the ball right at the 50. Marissa, I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying this game. I, I almost wish I was a spectator right now. <laughs> this is 
definitely a very, very good game. Absolutely. Both of these teams should be pretty happy with the way they're playing, but also motivated to want to play better than the other team because they are even. Tempo matching tempo, hits matching hits, uh, you know, talent matching talent, you know, great ideas out there. Forward with a big run here for Corning. Yep. Tegan rolls away, gets back on sides, balls out. And they're going to kick it. We have some Corning players trying to run for it, but not near close enough. Fiona Cusack making a run, breaking through tackles. Sosi is right there trying to, ooh, unfortunately ball became loose and it will be turned over to Corning. That was really well done by that Corning player. We'll get your name right there. Dove on the ball, kept the possession for her team. That was eight. the number eight and that would be Kendra Close. Heard her name a lot yesterday. She's an impact player for this team for certain. Corning Morris. holding onto the ball under some Morris pressure. Yeah, Morris has reset their defense, and they have very strong line. They are stopping these players. Oh, beautiful Slicing offload. run. That oh. was very smart. Because of that tackle, there was a wide opening, so that offload was very smart. That carry looked like it came from OU Yang. They're 10. Uh, good slicing run right there. And uh, the right here, Corning is still well in control and just north of the Morris 22. Corning is just pushing their way down the field. Oh, a break again from Close. Close just making the hard yards here, Marissa. All right, and we will see a whistle. Okay, it's penalty uh, just within the five. Uh, I guess Close was tackled down and unfortunately was unable to secure and uh, get the ball back uh, cleanly to her team, so not releasing the call. Unfortunately, we have a player down on the Corning side. Uh, we'll let you know what's going on there. Yep. Unfortunately, this is another break right when Corning is getting close to the try zone. Very see, unlucky. See, this is the same area where our Morris player, unfortunately, got injured as well. Very unlucky for Corning. Yeah. I mean, that's... You know, unfortunately, that's the way the ball bounces in rugby, right? Sometimes it's just, uh, you know, the, sometimes the uh, it goes your way, and sometimes the, mem the momentum kind of slips away quickly. Mm -hmm. And this is nothing on the player. Of course, the player who's down, I hope that they're going to be all right. And obviously, safety is of the utmost importance in any kind of game, especially one like this when you really are, you're, of course, you're tackling somebody else, but you always have to remember that safety first. You, this is supposed to be fun, not dangerous. 100%. 100%. So our trainer's out there uh, checking in on the down player. Looks like Corning is going to try to find a sub. Okay, uh, that's the half. Uh, so uh, we're going to end it on an injury. Uh, we're hoping that we'll try to get your name and a number on that jersey uh, that's down, and we want to see her walk off under her own power. But Marissa, I mean, fantastic. Notwithstanding the injuries, fantastic first half from both sides. I love that we're going into halftime tied because that means that both players will, or both teams will hopefully enter the second half hungry to be the player that, or the player and team that come out on top. I think that this is a well-deserved break. Both teams have been pushing really hard and working really hard to move the ball as much as they can. Absolutely. So drink some water, get back out there, and do it some more because what I've seen so far is just great rugby. Very exciting rugby. Very, very exciting rugby. So I think we'll take a moment while we've got the time here and we'll do a little bit of a word from our sponsors. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Marissa. Now a hat tip to our sponsors. The EGRL is supported by Basecamp 31. What's that? Well, we're so glad you asked. Located in Clinton, New Jersey and incorporated way back in 2004, Basecamp 31 is a nonprofit that works to build and support efforts that improve health, build community, and promote personal development. The kinds of things that push people to grow and communities to thrive, like the Elite Girls Rugby League. Learn more at Basecamp31.org. And Steamroller Rugby Supply. Look, here's the bottom line. Rugby isn't just some game where you throw the ball backward. It's a global tribe. It's not only about sharp skills, it's about looking sharp and a high-quality kit. 
When you want top quality at fair prices with personalized service, you want Steamroller Rugby Supply. Visit us at steamrollerrugby.com. Have you ever noticed how many sports leagues and teams are sponsored by physical therapists, trainers, and other similar professionals? It's almost like they're expecting you to get hurt and want to be top of mind. Not if, but when you do. What would you call a team of those same types of professionals that do treat injuries but spend most of their time working with you to prevent them instead? Some people call them crazy. They call themselves proactivity, and their customers usually call them first. It's not rehab. It's human achievement. And they've been doing so with top athletes and employers since 1998. Got a business that would get into supporting these great athletes too? We'd love to have you advertise with us. Send our ad minions a note. Email admin at egrl.org. All right, and we are back with the second half of Morris, Motley, U16, and Corning. Um, I am joined by Reagan. Reagan, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so I currently play for Doylestown. Um, I'm a junior, and I was um, participating in the USA rugby camp earlier today and started, decided to stick around to watch um, some more rugby. Great. So, Reagan, what is one thing you noticed during the first half of this game? Um, I definitely saw some physicality, a lot of punches, um, and a lot of quick takes um, as far as, you know, catching them um, off guard and taking, taking advantage of um, A's, and B, A's and B gaps. Absolutely. It seems to be like a pretty close game. We're going into the second half with an even score, and we will start with a kickoff by Corning to Morris. Ball is up. And we will start with Nora. Nora making a great run. Support is there. And the ball will go out to, I think that's Anna. Morris seems to be kind of chugging their way along the field, absolutely getting stopped by Corning's defense. Great run by Sienna. Very quick twos and threes. We've been seeing a lot of pods by both of these teams today, and both teams also trying to seem to be working against it. What is What are the benefits of a pod, Reagan? Um, well, you definitely have momentum when you take the ball in, um, on pace. Um, so you have the momentum to um, kind of run in and run past the defense. All right, looks like there was a turnover, and Corning will take the ball down, and that will that's number 11 making a great run with an offload, but Me by... Too. I think Julia it was, Gridley. yep, she's also their kicker. So there's been a whistle, and 
looks like we will resume play with a scrum to Morris right near the try line. That was just an, an unfortunate turnover, but great use of events by Corning. They just made their way down the field so quickly. So it was a forward pass, which is why we're going into a scrum. So there we have Abby Cirillo making a run for it off the scrum. Quick pass to Amanda Corfin, just breaking through the line. Strong running by Kayla Ronsky trying to break her way through that line. And unfortunately, it's turned over again. So Corning will resume possession. So we just got news that the Morris's try, who we did not give a name to in the first half, was Emily Starkweather. So kudos to her. As Corning makes their way down the field, looks like we will have another stop. Can you see the ref? Um, looks just like a penalty on Morris. Okay, so we will start with Corning ball. Looks like she will kick it and line out to Corning. Okay. This seems to be a pretty even game still so far going into the second half. Both teams are definitely looking for who's going to be the next try scorer of the game. Obviously, when it's tied like this, the motivation just amps up really high. But both teams need to remember the fundamentals of the game, making sure they're, they're playing solid rugby. That's the only way they're going to make it. It definitely seems like a try for try, meter for meter game at this point. Morning, continuing to make their way down the field after that line out. Still really strong work by their forwards. They are just trying to break through that strong defensive line by Morris. And Morris is just stopping them. Runner's going to take it wide. Just short of the try line. Quick pass out. One more. Julia Gridley has it back. And she, she will touch it down. That was great work by Corning, making their way down the field. They finally passed it wide after realizing that just one pass and punching it with the forwards was not working for them with that Morris defense. And they took advantage of taking it out wide when Morris seemed to be a little bunched. Yeah, I was just, just thinking about how I'd like to see pulling it out to the outside, and they just they read my mind. At the beginning of this game, both teams to be pretty seem to be pretty widespread and using advantage of the whole field. Yeah, Steph and I talked about how yesterday we watched quite a few teams stay bunched for the whole game and it did not work to their advantage. So looks like Julia Gridley will kick for her own try. And unfortunately it is no good, which brings our score to twelve. Seven in favor of Corning, although I have no doubt that Morris is going to try to uh, match up and get back closer to them on the board. Definitely, definitely I'd like to see um, Corning get this back and try and bring it back into, um, into their territory again. Great kick by Abby Cirillo. And, yep, right off the kickoff. Looks like they're going to play the advantage. Because of that kick, Morris is already deep into that end of the field. Hopefully they can continue making their way down. Strong running by, I believe that is Emily Starkweather. They just can't get her down. And Morris will continue. There are a lot of strong forwards on both teams today that are just barreling through these defensive lines. I think both teams have that in their favor. But the penalty gives it back to Morris. 
throughout the game, we've been hearing all the uh, subs on both teams just cheering on their their teammates on the field, and I love that support. Rugby is one of those games where you know you're going to have somebody cheering for you, not just parents and spectators, but also your own teammates. Yeah, definitely makes the game more fun when you have um, support. All right, on Morris field. swings it wide, goes out to the wings. Right now, I believe Rowan has it. And they're going to pass it back, making their way towards the center. Strong punches in. I'd like to see them take it outside there. Seems to be a three on one on the outside. Absolutely. If they just a few more passes, they have it. Smart offload. Corning trying to regroup and bring their players out wide because they can see Morris is moving that way. Looks like there's going to be another like no late call game. for a penalty. And again, Abby Cirillo with the quick play off of a penalty. We saw that a few times in the first half, and it worked to their advantage and eventually led to Morris's first try of the game because Corning was just not ready. And it looks like it works again for Morris as they touch it down for another try. And it is again Emily Starkweather, I believe. Great effort by Morris to make their way down the field. And even though the try score was the same, even though the try score was the same for both tries, it was still a team effort. All players were trying to make it through and break that corning line. And right. this this kick seems like it's gonna be a little bit easier for Cirillo. Last kick was pretty much towards the touch zone, but this one seems to be more centered, so we'll see once it's up if they will tie or take the lead. Yeah, I think between all of the phases, I think it touched pretty much every every teammate's hands. And the kick is good, which means Morris will take the lead, and it will be 14-12. I think about two players in the match from either side, and then we'll get them interviewed after the game. So my, my recommendation, but you tell me otherwise, is 10 to 15 over here, but there's still rugby to play. And then to talk to you guys on the red and black. So... Now Morris has taken the lead. Steph and I discussed this in the beginning in the first half, but those kicks really mean a lot. Two points may not sound like a huge difference, but Morris being able to make both of their kicks has given them an advantage over Courtney at this point in the game. And they will start with the ball off the kickoff. Very deep kick. Strong run by Emily Starkweather, and support is already there for the Ruck. Corning's a little bunched. I like to see them spread a little bit. And Morris is taking advantage of that. Wonderful run by Maddie Gonsalves. And unfortunately, Corning dominates that Ruck. Morning, Morris is able to keep their possession. Strong run by Charlotte Pitar. I definitely notice what you're saying about Corning being bunched, though. Looks like on their defensive end, they're not really a line. They're more of a clump. And they are stopping Morris, but if they if they solidify a, a line on defense, I have no doubt that they will stop Morris even more. And looks like they are able to get possession, turnover, right at the 50. Seems like a lot of this game is happening around the 50. Yeah, and on that note, um, the bunch is helping with with the pods, but if Morris had moved it outside, they would have had quite a bit of an overload. All right, Corning is choosing to just have a pod right next to the last breakdown, not moving it very far out to the other areas of the field, which is not working really offensively because a lot of Morris's strongest players are going to be right near that breakdown. taking about three Morris players, and they're holding her up. Looks like a mall and is it, called. it will be a mall. You can see players from both teams just running in trying to support. All right, looks like we're going 
going to have a scrum down right around the 10. And Corning is going to make a sub. Looks like our number 25 is coming in. That will be Desiree Stickler. Coming and in for number seven, Ella Kosier. Wonderful. All right. There haven't been too many scrums this game. There were definitely a few games yesterday that had quite a few scrums, which can be very tiring for forwards. Um, but so far, all the scrums have been pretty clean and um, good efforts by both teams. I will say as a forward, um, definitely games that have a lot of scrums are not the most fun. They're just so tiring because once there was a game, I think it was Morris's last game yesterday, Today there were like three scrums within five minutes, and I was just sitting over here thinking, oh my gosh, if that was me. Oh. <laughs> yes, especially when you get it, when you win the scrum and then you get it out to your um, backs and then they knock it on. Hmm. Looks like there will be a turnover. Corning will regain possession right around the 50. Morris didn't gain too much yardage on their last possession. Corning is making their way down the field. They are using the width of the field. Must have been and a knock on. There will be a knock on. I feel like I jinxed it. I just said there weren't too many scrums and now they're scrumming again. <laughs> All right. And ball is in on the scrum. Strong push by Morris, but well within the high school guidelines. And Abby Cirilla will take it and run, pass it out to the backs. A little bit of sloppy passing, but they're able to maintain possession. Strong run by Nora. Quick two and three. And the forwards are already there after the scrum to support, but. Some little diving slip. over call on Corning. Yep. You can definitely tell that both teams are losing just a smidgen of discipline this far into the game. They're probably both tired because this game has been so competitive. And the ball will find touch after a kick by Abby Cirillo. And we will have a line out just halfway between the try zone and the 50. All right. Morris's line out, and they are choosing to have a full line out, all the players in there. And unfortunately, neither team is able to keep their jumpers up, but Morris is able to get the ball and continue their possession. They're going to take it wide. No, nope. Amanda Corfin with the kick. And unfortunately, Morris's chasers were not Being able to get there in time. Oh, wow. Strong running. A lot of space. And yeah! stopped by Fiona Cusack, but unfortunately, Corning had support there. And on that one, I'd like to see the, um, the ball move from the right side to the left side. That way, she has that right side open for fending, and she could have taken that outside more. Hmm. Very wise. Both teams have finally made their way that far into the field. And another turnover. Morris will regain possession, but they are so far down the field now. Looks like the ref is going to call a timeout. Unfortunately, there is another injury. I cannot tell which team has a player down, but I hope they are all right. So far in the second half, what have you noticed different between this playing and the playing in the first half? I definitely say, like you said, a um, little bit of uh, not as more, not as organized, um, more of you know individual, like taking it up, taking it up, um, which as long as they have support is um, good. But you know maybe putting it to the pods and then popping it back out to the backs. Um, still a lot of using the pods, but um, there's been quite a few cases where there's an overload on the outside for both teams. All right, looks like it was a Morris player who was down, but she has decided to get back up herself. And I think she's going to remain in the game because the sub Morris put in is coming right back off the field. We will resume play with a scrum. And it will be in Morris's favor. 
We've been seeing a few injuries this game. This ref has been very good about stopping the game when he sees a player down, because obviously safety is of the utmost importance, and I feel like I just keep saying that this game, but that's just one of the rules of sport, not just rugby. All right, Morris wins their scrum, and the ball goes out. Wonderful bursting, but that was a little bit high. Looks like there will be no call. Strong running by Emily Van Doren. There it is. Yep. Is that no advantage gained? Um, looks like player will remain down. We're going to take another little brief pause. Up until now, it has been very clean rugby. Um, but like I said, the, the farther you get into a game, especially if it's competitive, people are getting tired, people tend to get sloppy. So, hopefully that Morris player is going to be all right. So and just the, a super physical game in general. Yeah. But com competitiveness and physicality is not a bad thing. It leads both teams to be more motivated, and most often it does work well to both teams' advantage. Um, unfortunately, sometimes there is just, you know, never intentional, but of course sometimes you just get caught in a situation. Looks like our Morris player has gotten up and will remain in the game. So kudos to Emily Van Doren. And Morris is going to have a toe and go to resume. And Abby Cirillo will run with it. And it's out to the forward pods. Almost fumbled. They that is right out of my line of vision. What happened, Reagan? Um, so Corning, we will have um, line out. Line out right in front of us. We'll have a great view for this one. Yep, Corning um, went over to try to counter rock and just lost their footing is all. Well. Hmm. You always want to get low in those rocks, but too low will hurt you. All right, so Morris will have a line out. They've, the line out seemed to have been pretty even today. Um, right at the 50. All right. Not a super high lift, but good line out by both teams nonetheless. And Morris will try to swing it out wide as Corning tries to reassemble their defensive positioning. Still seems like Corning is quite bunched. Only okay. leaving one or two on the outside of either. Yep, the ref is going to call the delay penalty again. There will be another toe and go. Will she run or will she kick? They're going to take this moment. Yep. All right. Forwards are there in a pod. All right. Looks like Cording has been able to stop the Morris offense. The very strong defensive presence. Can they keep it up, though? Morris has made their way past the 50 and are continuing to make their way down the field. Strong running by Emily Starkweather, our try scorer of the day for Morris. And nice fake. strong run by Amanda Corfin. Support is there for the Ruck, and they will continue passing it out to their backs. Cording has learned from their lesson, though, and support is there. Having a hard time getting Morris down, though, and that is Maria Wise, I believe. All right, ref is going to call the delay penalty again, and Morris will get a fresh start. Looks like they're calling the captains out. Yep. For a chat. Game, game has been a little sloppy for the last few minutes, so not surprising. So ref's just going to have a little chat with them.
Sorry, folks, some technical difficulties. Um, Morris will resume play with their possession, passing it out, making their way down the field. A few short passes between players. They have made their way closer to us on this side of the field. Strong running by Anna Y. Support is there as soon as she goes down. Seems like Corning's a little bit more spread out this time. Yep, I think that throughout this game, they have just been able to improve both their defense and offense, learning from the way that Morris is playing and the and the competitiveness of this game. Nice She's tackle. able to poach off the ruck. There has only been, I believe, one other poach so far this game, and that just shows how strong the rucking is for both teams. It's another turnover. Morris has regained possession. Corning has regained possession, and the ref is going to blow the whistle. Looks like there was a forward pass, and there will be another scrum. Just a very back-and-forth game right now. Towards the, the first half of this game, the back-and-forth was mostly due to the physicality of both teams and their competitiveness. Unfortunately, towards as we near the end of this game, the back-and-forth is because of sloppiness by both teams, but that just shows how hard they've been working this whole game. They're definitely tired, even though the game's not over yet. I hope that they can continue to play Another the good game of push. rugby. They're going to go with an eight-man pick by Kayla Ronsky as Emily Van Doren makes her way down the field on the far end. Looks like they're right about the 22 right now. Kind of hard to see with the slope the field is on. And unfortunately, there was a turnover. Corning has possession right near the try zone as they will try to make their way back down the whole field. Another whistle. Ah, we heard from our producer that Emily Van Doren is the reason for this turnover in favor of Morris. It's a very smart play, holding on to the ball um, to catch the not releasing call on the other team. Absolutely, and if a player knows how to do it right, it'll work in their advantage every time. Also very frustrating as the person down on the ground because no matter how much you try and show that you're not releasing the ball, sometimes there's just, sometimes it's just that it looks like not releasing to the ref. Yep. I definitely jinxed this, though, about 10 minutes ago when I said, oh, there haven't been that many scrums, the forwards must be having it, because now the set pieces in this game have just been back and forth and back and forth lineouts and scrums and whatnot. So Corning will start making their way down the field with some strong runners as Morris tries to redefine their defensive line. Yeah, that, that throw in didn't seem the most straight, but the ref doesn't call it. We can hear from the sideline that Morris is trying to tell the players on the field to spread a little bit wider, worrying that Corning will take advantage of the width of the field. Not rolling away. Yep. Morris tried to take the ball back, but unfortunately it did not work. And Corning will kick it, and it will find touch at right about the 10. And we will have another lightning out. Not sure how much time is left in this game. Unfortunately, due to the stoppages we've had, it's hard to guesstimate. But for sure, we are somewhere near the end. I'm not going to trust Chris O'Brien on this one because yesterday he gave me a five to seven minute interval. and The game ended in two minutes. So not even going to ask. He says about two minutes this time. All right. Corning was good on the line out and now they will continue passing unfortunately a little bit of sloppiness and another shot yep there it is I've seen a lot of very big um, well executed pushes by uh, by Morris yes and unfortunately there are guidelines with how far you can push in high school rugby um but I know that the packs are definitely keeping this in mind because there hasn't been any like unsafeness in the scrums. Nobody has fallen over. Nobody has turned so much. It has been pretty even. Corning won their own scrum. Nice strong take on pace. Mm -hmm. 
and they are again choosing to just short pass to the forwards right next to the breakdown and try to make their way through Morris's defense. Morris has yet to reestablish a straight line for defense. So I'm hoping to see that formed. However, they have been able to continue to stop Corning's offense. Ball has remained in pretty much the same area of the field for the last few minutes. Yeah, Corning has the ball, but they don't seem to be too see. And here is what Morris was worried about happening. They have decided to use the width of the field to their advantage. Strong running, breaking through tackles. I can't get a number because of the amount of bodies on her, but once she gets back up, that is... 20 something, it's either 23 or 25. So it was 25. I will get a name on that soon. All right, our strong runner right there was Desiree Stickler. Corny gets it back though, deeper this time. And again, they're choosing to take it out wide, which, has, which worked for them last time and is working for them again because Morris has not regained the width and straightness of a defensive stature. Can't see the number on that one. Yeah, unfortunately they are very far away of, from us on the field. Maybe 23. Very strong offense by Corning. They have made their way down the field rather quickly and rather powerfully. Morris is just um, trying to stop them. Morris, looks like. And they're able to get a turnover. Morris and back. ball is not going to find touch. Battle inside the ruck. Corning regains possession off of that kick and are making their way down the field pretty close to the try line. Is this how the game will end? Looks like it. Ball's not quite in yet. Ref is telling them they're short. Corny gets it back. Morris has been able to stop them so far. And... Hard to tell what's going on. Ball's out again, another runner with it. And like they're, yep. Corning gets down this time. They're going to keep attempting, but Morris has done well stopping them. Morris needs to regain their presence out there, though, because... Oh, if she had caught that pass, that, that would have been a try. Corning gets it back. Morris making their way over to that area of the field to stop Corning. And unfortunately, it does not work for them. Ref has not called a try yet, however. A little bit of discussion over there. All right. Be held up or knock on. Knock on. Knock on by Corning. That is unfortunate. They were so close to that try zone. They were working for it. That was a double movement on Corning. For those of you who don't know what that means, that means she got down with the ball and then got right back up again without releasing the ball and tried to slide her way into the try zone because they were so close. Kicking the ball again, it will find touch, and that will be game. Mars is able to keep their lead 14-12. Corning almost had it right there at the end. That try would have ended the game with a win. So now, let's discuss our players of the game. I definitely have a player in mind for both teams, but I would love to hear your input first, Reagan. You know, I... Definitely, um, definitely a lot of uh, good plays by Abby Cervella, who was um, making um, just all over the ball um, on and off defense. Um, as far as Corning goes, a couple strong pushes by, um, I think, number 11, Julia Gridley, as well as number 25, Desiree Stickler, had a good couple. Had a couple good plays as well. I like both of those as well. Number 25 was late into the game, a sub during the second half, but she made her presence known because as soon as she was in, we were saying her name quite a bit. I like both of your choices um, for that team as well. I think for me, I am going to say that it's going to be number 11, Julia Gridley for Corning, and I will agree with Abby Cirillo for Morris. So we will get them in here soon, and we will have a guest interviewer 
for them, and that will be Mackenzie. Yep. We'd call Desiree an impact sub. Making an impact. All right. <laughs> Abby Cirillo and Julia Gridley. Um, although she will not be player of the game, we will honorable mention number 10, Catherine Uyang um, from Corning. She is one of their few seniors who will be attending UNC Chapel Hill. So um, very good game by her and strong leadership as well on the field as we bring over our two players of the match. Both teams are going to do a little breakdown, so it might be a few minutes. Test. Welcome to our interview section. This is Abby Cirillo from Morris, and we're going to ask her a couple questions. So, what do you think went well for these games? I think that our line speed really helped because they got it outside a few times, but then we stopped them before they could get it all the way out. And I thought that our forwards were really tough and kept on pushing them. And their forwards were good, but we were better. <laughs> um, what do you guys think we can improve on as a team, as in Morris? Okay, I definitely think our line speed is, has gotten a lot better, but I feel like our line speed could be a lot better. Um, I feel like we should also like set up pods a little bit quicker, but overall I think we're doing really good this season. I thought that our pods were really good, but sometimes like when... Uh, our ten called, like giant, or called like for the backs. Then I, they were still there, so they need to just get through a little bit faster. And what are you guys looking forward to for the rest of the season? Mars and nationals. I'm very excited. Yay! Mars again. All right. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank Welcome back. So we are here with some of the Corning girls. Ladies, can you introduce yourselves? I'm Catherine O'Young. I'm Julia Gridley. All right, nice. So what, 
What do you think you guys could improve on for your team? Um, you go first. <laughs> I would say firing more, like we gotta get up there faster and like definitely be with someone. We gotta like follow each other and yeah. So. Yeah, security is big. I'd say another big thing, I think we're better offensively than we are defensively. I think it just comes easier to us. So defensively, I think we still need to work on, like we've seen improvement this weekend defensively a lot, but we still need to work on looking up on defense especially if you're not right next to the ruck so that the person who's at the ruck can call out when we should be firing up. That way we know where the people are offensively. All right, what do you guys think went well for you guys this game? Oh, um, honestly, just like not going crazy. Like, I don't know how to explain that more. It's more like, like running the script. We were talking a lot, again, about ball security, also about following the structure so that we wouldn't get lost and the people would know where everybody was going. So it was good like from yesterday to today I've seen improvement all throughout the like all throughout the team. So Yeah, I'd say we did good at the end by staying like calm and like not like over pushing it and getting into many penalties. Like so yeah. Yeah, we, we, did, well. yeah, we did well. We did bad. we did well with that, yeah. Learning from our mistakes. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> all right, and what are you ladies excited for for the rest of the season? Um, I'm excited to learn more about rugby because this is my first year and yeah, I'm really excited to learn more. I want to execute my first grubber ever. Like I, I was this close this weekend. I'm going to do it. Don't you worry. I will get there. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate thank you so you. much. Thank you to Mackenzie for that interviewing. And we are going to take a quick break before our next game of the day. So let's have a little word from, oh, no, never mind. We're going to interview our coaches. All right, uh, give this step, give Steph back the mic. Test, okay, we're good. Hey guys. I, I think it's going to be tough for the three of us to get into this uh, screen here. But, hey, guys, I'm here with the uh, Corning coaching staff. Uh, gents, terrific weekend. You brought some talent down to uh, North Jersey, Northwestern Jersey, and we're super happy to have you guys. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm uh, head coach Bob McGee. Uh, assistant coach Mike Larrabee. So uh, what went well for you guys today, uh, yesterday and today? Let's, let's cover the whole weekend. You know, I think this group of girls really came together and found themselves this week. Uh, we've been together trying to work on this since the beginning of March, and it's it's been a been a number of weekends where we've had very challenging games, and we've grown and we've grown. We only have three seniors, and only uh, two of them have played before, so we were a young, inexperienced team and really started growing these last couple of weeks. And I think this was the best weekend of rugby that we've played. Um, we really brought everything together. Our physicality, our, our attacking shape. I was extremely proud of our defense. We were organized. We, we tackled extremely well in all three games. And uh, I just think they, they grew and learned a ton this weekend. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Coach, what do you have to add? Uh, you know, I just think, I just think, you know, the big thing this weekend is, uh, you know, we've really established roles on the team going into this weekend. You know, we have our game breakers, we have our role players, you know, everybody has understood the assignment all weekend and that really, you know, gelled in. And I mean, we've, we've played a lot of the EGRL teams leading up to this. You know, we were in North Bay, we were down in West Carroll. You know, we've, we've put a big task in front of the girls this season and we're kind of seeing it. And now it's how do we keep peak, you know, reaching towards the peak till, you know, our state championships and the showcase weekend. To kind of add to that, we had told the girls we were we were trying to ramp up to a couple of different weekends, and this was really we tried to ramp up to our tour down to Baltimore area, and then we're like, all right, we're going to ramp up to this weekend, and then we got to ramp up to the New York State Championships in uh, June 3rd. So that's kind of our next ramp up. Now we got a couple of weeks to fine tune, improve, and come out and play our best rugby again. Guys, I can't wait to see it because I was duly impressed with the rugby that I saw coming out of that blue hoop jersey this weekend. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you guys again. Thanks for coming down to Western Jersey. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having us, guys. You bet. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Corning coaching staff. Thanks, guys. All right, and now that all of our interviews are done, great interviews with Corning players, Corning coaches, and Morris players, we are going to take a quick commercial break before our next game, which will be a motley game with all players who want to play. So we'll see you soon. All right, and we are back with our second and final game of today. We have two motley crews going against each other. So that is players from all sorts of teams combining their efforts to really provide an unbiased and even match. Yep, so they've mixed up and worn. They're wearing the Morris jerseys, and is that? That will be an Orchard Park jersey. I think I see an OP on there. So we have white and black, pretty much. So unfortunately, since this is a motley game, we do not have rosters because all the teams are combined with multiple teams. So we'll try our best to get you player names or at least their home teams, but sometimes we might not be able to. All right, starting off strong with a kick by Black and first catch made by OP's jerseys, White. Big as made about 20 meters. Yep, I think that was the white number 25 with a great run and push strong down the field. Run up the outside, that looks to be Caitlin Maroney. From Morris. <laughs> Breaking a couple tackles. Those ladies in the white OP jerseys are just making their way down the field and we will have our first try this soon in the game right by in the middle. white number 12, I wanna say. So maybe later in the game we'll be able to get some intel about what her name is or at least what team she plays for. But that was a great team effort by our white team making their way down the field, eventually leading to a try. All right, both teams are kind of resuming their positions to restart the game. I will say there's a lot of benefit to running these Motley Crews um, and to playing with people that are not in your team normally. Um, there's a lot to be learned from just playing with people that you've never played before. Yeah, absolutely. And it really provides the most unbiased setting for games because there's really no way to split the teams up where it won't be even. If you're taking players from all kinds of teams, all kinds of positions, and we will have another kick by Morris, Morris jerseys, Starting off with another white OP jersey possession. Not, not quite sure if that kick was 10, but it was played by the OP jerseys. Yep. We have the same ref that we had in our first game. Did a great job officiating earlier today. So this looks so far like it's going to be a good game. Lots of strong teamwork efforts by our white team so far as they try to pass it out wide. and they will continue with their possession as our white number 13 makes a great run for it and is eventually tackled by black number 11, which is Sosie Honing called from for, Morris. Called for uh, diving over. All right, so black will get a chance at possession and hopefully make good effort with it. They choose to kick it into touch and it will land right next to our camera tent and then on top. So we will have our first set piece of the game and that will be a line out. Let's be right about the 10. All right, so it's going to be a black line out. They're trying to match up numbers, figure out who's going where in these line outs. That's a hard thing about these set pieces during a Motley kind of game. Of course, you establish what your position is but you never really know where other people are comfortable playing and who's going to have an advantage. Very high Looks lift, like right into a mall. they're going to attempt a mall, but not did called. not follow through with that because White never connected. Yep, in order for a mall to be considered a mall, the other team has to 
um, at least touch the person as well. Yep, so Black will start making their way down the field with a lot of strong pushes through White's defense, but unfortunately, that was a great clear out of the ruck by White number 21, who I know is Caitlin Maroney from Morris. Ball was picked up by number 10 on Morris. And the ref is going to say diving into the ruck again. So it's going to be a black Morris jersey ball. Yeah, we saw them um, practicing before the game, just trying to figure out who was going where as far as the, uh, the scrum and the line out goes. As much as I love these Motley games, it's very hard to know whether there's going to be passing chemistry, which I think from what I've seen so far, both teams have, despite probably never playing with some of these girls before. Um, the communication is there. You can hear the chatter on the field, and that is the only way these teams who, they might not even know each other's names, but communication on the field is the only way they're going to be able to keep the game moving, because otherwise there will be missed passes and missed opportunities by both teams. It is white ball again as they make their way down the field with a lot of strong runs by multiple players. None really like standing out at the moment. Seems to be good team effort. Looks like white player 21, who is Morris's Caitlin Maroney, will make her way down the field down, and down the corner. into the try zone. Um, this is going to be a pretty hard kick for whoever is kicking for the white jerseys. We will see soon who that will be. And... A good, strong start to the game. And a lot of game left to play, so we'll see what happens. Yep, early lead by the white jerseys. Yeah, they definitely seem to be making a good use of the, some of their strong runners on the team. It's very hard for these black jerseys to keep up at this point. They have strong defensive line, but once you get past them, you're pretty much gone. So they're going to keep taking advantage of that until Black can solve the problem. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like Black has gotten much of an opportunity on uh, offense to really connect. Um, they haven't had really much of a chance to put any, um, any passes or pieces together. All right, so that kick, very hard, unfortunately was not made. Um, so nonetheless, white jerseys have the lead. The game will continue with a kickoff to them and we'll see if they'll make their way down the field again or if Black will be able to gain possession and return the favor by scoring a try of their own. There seems to be a lot of talent out there on the field from what I can see. A lot of these players are playing for the first time so far today. Unfortunately, we've only had one game before this and that was between Morris and Corning. And the kick once again does not go 10. Yeah, and on when the ball is kicked, if it doesn't go 10, as long as the other team or the receiving team does not touch it with it that 10, um, they can receive it back at the 50 for, or re-kick. Yep, but since they touched it and then it was turned over, they are still going to play it. Black is making their way down the field with a great momentum. White is trying to reconstruct themselves, get back there, and actually form a defensive front but it is not working as Black continues making their way down the field. I can hear a lot of communication on the field. Hopefully they are trying their hardest to score and talking to each other to figure out how to execute that. Yeah, I don't have a very good view, so hopefully you do. Right now, Morris's Nessa McLaughlin has the ball and looks like she scored a try for Black. So the black team finally gets on the board. That was a very strong effort and smart rugby by them as well, taking advantage of all the opportunities presented by having it that far back in the field when some of, white, some of the white players were not that back there yet. So Morris took advantage of those openings, or the Morris jerseys, sorry. Um, so then we will have our first kickoff. Looks like black jersey number 20 is going to be the kicker. And... We will see. This seems to be like not too bad of an angle, but there is a wind. So we will have to see. Looks like she's going to be using a T, and we'll see that soon.
Both teams are already set up for the next beginning of the game. So as soon as this kickoff happens, we'll be able to restart play rather quickly. Unfortunately, that kick does not make it near the uprights. is 12-5. Sounds about right. I do not know the outcome of the first um, conversion by White after their first try. I did not have a vision of that. It was right in the middle, so I'm going to assume. All right. So we will resume play. Um, at the very least, White is up by one try so far. And wonderful kick by White for Black to start making their way down the field. With their possession, looks like there was a whistle. All right, looks like there was some diving into the rock from what I can see. And White is going to choose to kick it into touch. And we will have another line out on the far side of the field. Looks to be about the 22. So what have you noticed so far in this game, Regan? Um, I see a little bit of more difficulty with um, connecting, which obviously can be attributed to the fact that uh, many of the people on both of these teams have never played with each other before. Um, I think as we go on in this game, I think they'll connect more and um, kind of find their strong suits uh, in within their individual teams um, and hopefully piece together a little bit better. I agree. It's definitely a short time to get to know your teammates. But the more you play, the more you learn how others are comfortable playing, and the easier it will be for these teams to truly make their way down the field and play solid rugby. That was strong clearing of the ruck by Black's Nessa McLaughlin, who plays for Morris. And the ball is out now to Sydney Sibilia, who is a captain of the Morris team. So is Nessa McLaughlin. I should have mentioned that. Looks like Black is, going, is making their way down the field pretty strongly. Nice um, attempted poach by White. Little bit of lack of support there. Runner did not have a pod near her, but they are still able to get there and clear the ruck. Ball is making its way out, strong offload. White is trying to come over and establish defensive presence right here on this end of the field. Ball has made its way from one touch zone to the other and looks like it's about to make its way back. Ooh, strong running by number 16 on black, making her way through some of White's defense. I think the black jerseys are a little bunched. Um, obviously, with the slope of the field, you can't quite see how wide they are. I would agree. Um, I wouldn't say they're in pods because they don't look quite formed yet. Yeah. Great running. That'll be number 28 on black. That is Morris, is one of their captains, Sydney Sibilia. But however, she had nobody there when she went down. Um, they caught it up, but she thought she was going to have to take it herself. You saw her release the ball and try to get up to pick it up again to continue her possession. She gets tackled out, or Morris gets tackled out of bounds into touch. All right, and looks like there will be a sub on Black. Sydney Sibilia will come out, and Black number eight will come back in. I recognize her face from yesterday, but could not tell you which team she was playing for. However, I do remember that she was their number eight, and she had a very strong presence on the field. She made some great tackles yesterday. Looks like the lineout was unfortunately fumbled, and the white jerseys will take possession, start making their way down the field. Strong tackle by number eight on black to establish her first presence in the game. Strong seal by white. Looks to be Liz. So Black has the ball back Morris. again. Strong running by Morris's other captain, Nessa McLaughlin. And the, they continue to pass the ball out. Despite their bunchedness, they are trying to use the width of the field. It's not really being executed because of some of these players' positions. There is virtually one player near us on this end of the field for Black, whereas there are four or five defensemen on white ready for them to come over here. I think if the ball gets turned over like it just did, I think um, that side will be in trouble. If they pass it out over here, there is no no chance that they will not be able to make it pack Black's defense because of the unevenness of presence for both teams out here. Looks like Black needs to start communicating and telling each other to spread. I think that'll be their left, so spread left a little bit. I know it's hard. None of them really want to be the one to control their teammates. Obviously, this is a Motley team. There's no real leaders um, besides the coaches. So nobody wants to be that player who's telling other players what to do. But you really need your wingers to establish the fact that they are, they are saying they need support out there. You need to listen to them. 
So hopefully somebody will start speaking up if that happens again. Yeah, you know, I did see their uh, their wing calling for it, but there's two sides to communication, um, speaking and listening. So mm -hmm. making sure that you're, um, as a player, both talking to the people next to you as well as listening to those that uh, may need help is a key part of um, rugby. Yep. So we will... Um, I think we will have a line out over on the far side of the field over there. In f it is Black's line out. Trying to match numbers up. I don't think White has enough in the line out, but um, they're trying to figure out who is. Yep, who are they missing? Which putting less people in is allowed. It's not usually suggested, but um, you can have less people. You just can't have more than the team throwing in. Mm hmm. There was one team yesterday, I don't remember who, who preferred to have four people in their lineouts. So that was definitely interesting. Some of these teams probably have never seen that before. So it was a good, it was a good learning experience for them to figure out who's going to go in these lineouts when we have less people. All right, Black has made their way, has passed the ball back towards this side of the field, trying to use the width. White is kind of bunched. They have yet to establish a line on defense during this cycle of the game. Strong Great offload. And the ball is back towards the middle of the field. Number one on black, I think just got into the game probably recently. I noticed that she had been standing on the sideline at the start. I do not know who she went in for. Looks like Nessa McLaughlin chose to pick it up from the rock and try to run with it, but was stopped. White has established very strong defense at this point in the game. So we will see if anybody on black is able to break through. Oh, look, it is 20-something. I did not catch the second number on that jersey, but that was very strong running by whatever player that was, breaking through the defense, taking a few players to tackle her. Yeah, Nessa had another strong uh, strong run there, but I would like to see some support with her. She was kind of by herself. Yeah, we, we saw that as well a few minutes ago from black. Looks like when one of their players gets running, some other players, they don't really know who's supposed to be supporting that player, chasing after them. Ball is lost pickup by number one on black. Good offload by number one on black as well. And they are definitely nearing that try line. If they continue this momentum, a try will be, will be called soon. From this angle, I cannot tell how far away they are, but they are pretty darn close, looking like trying to take advantage of that far end of the field as white tries to spread out and match it. They are right in the area of our obstructed vision. Looks like it was held up by White. Thank you to our producer for letting us know. He is, in fact, the one blocking us, so. Fleet <laughs> he can do. All right. So White is going to kick it, and the ball will not find touch, but will find the hands of Sosie Harning from Morris as they try to make their way back down the field. Black is looking for that try. Very strong running, good passes, and they are have good momentum so far as they try to establish some offense. A little bit of a fumble there, but it went backwards, so it doesn't matter. It looks like number 28 on that one had a quick, um, quick transfer to the outside and then followed her pass. Yep, she strong running by expression. number eight right there on Black. And looks like it is again Nessa McLaughlin with a strong run right through White's defense. Seems to be put down right in the same spot as the last one. Yep. So we will see if this kick will be good, and then we'll have a better idea of the score. But it seems to be pretty much even so far. I know that White established a little bit of a presence trying to um, score in the first two tries of the game. But Black has had no problem coming back, and it really comes down to the motivation and perseverance of these players. Looks like they're getting a water break, and then we will continue in the first half of this match. All right, looks like both teams have about six or so subs on the sideline. I'm sure everybody will get...
plenty of playing time, seeing as I've already seen a few players sub themselves out when they need a break. Yep, and that kick was taken by number 26, who was, um, I correct myself, this the person that um, was following, uh, following their pass on the last one. Mm. All right, so it will be a kickoff to Black, and we'll see if they are able to strongly make their way down the field again. Great kick, and immediately caught by Black, number eight, who is just bursting through that white defense, and support is there for the Rock. Seems like Black narrowly missed a uh, not releasing call. Great running on Black, pulled down by her jersey, unfortunately. Once I get a number on that, I'll let you know, but I remember her, she had Batman face paint yesterday. It was awesome. That will be, yep, number one on black. White has been able to have some very strong tackles so far, but black perseveres nonetheless. Black 29 just breaking through at least three tackles right there. No one can seem to get her down. Nope, offload to number two, who then offloads it to another one of her teammates. The flow is, the flow is starting. Some of these passes, they are starting to trust each other which is a really good sign in one of these Motley games because trust is going to help a lot if the other, t if both teams don't really know each other. Looks like it was a turnover. White has regained possession. Strong run by White's number 10 to establish them up the field Taylor and the outside, number, number 13. 13. I believe she scored earlier this game, if I can remember correctly. Looks like a battle in the rock. White keeps their possession though and they are just bursting their way up the field black is trying to stop them best they can establishing defense but white is taking advantage of some of these openings and really talking to each other looks like they're going to pass it out now this is White's player who had a very strong run just like this at the very beginning of the game off the first kickoff. So definitely a player to look out for. That's number 25 on White. She subbed out for a little bit but is now back in. Now we have White number 15. Smart offload to number 11 and another one to number 10. Unfortunately, she dropped the ball but it went backwards so it's okay. They keep possession and number 11 is able to touch it down for a try. Well deserved because of her smart rugby earlier a few seconds ago. I believe number 10 is um, Orchard Park's Annie Henrich. Her name was mentioned a lot yesterday as well. Definitely a player who makes her presence known out on that pitch and a great team effort by White. Um, I could definitely tell there's a lot of trust between those players on the field and that is something that will work to their advantage. Looks like there's going to be a, a few more subbing on Black's end as Nessa McLaughlin will come out as well as number 27 on Black and um, Amanda Corfin on Black. I don't know what number she's wearing, but she's from Morris. Henry took the kick. It's not successful. Now we'll have halftime. That will be half. We have five minutes. We are going to take a commercial break and we'll see you at the second half. And now a hat tip to our sponsors. The EGRL is supported by Basecamp 31. What's that? Well, we're so glad you asked. Located in Clinton, New Jersey and incorporated way back in 2004, Basecamp 31 is a nonprofit that works to build and support efforts that improve health, build community, and promote personal development. The kinds of things that push people to grow and communities to thrive, like the Elite Girls Rugby League. Learn more at Basecamp31.org. And Steamroller Rugby Supply. Look, here's the bottom line. Rugby isn't just some game where you throw the ball backward. It's a global tribe. It's not only about sharp skills, it's about looking sharp and a high quality kit. When you want top quality at fair prices with personalized service, you want Steamroller Rugby Supply. Visit us at steamrollerrugby.com. Have you ever noticed how many sports leagues and teams are sponsored by physical therapists, trainers, and other similar professionals? It's almost like they're expecting you to get hurt and want to be top of mind. Not if, but when you do. What would you call a team of those same types of professionals that do treat injuries but spend most of their time working with you to prevent them instead? Some people call them crazy. They call themselves proactivity and their customers usually call them first. It's not rehab, it's human achievement. 
and they've been doing so with top athletes and employers since 1998. Got a business that would get into supporting these great athletes too? We'd love to have you advertise with us. Send our ad minions a note. Email admin at egrl.org. Right. Our second half is about to begin as we come back from our halftime break. Both teams using this break to establish who was going to start and of those people, who was going to play which position because these teams are motley. Some of these players don't have a set definition of where they're going to play if they know how to play multiple positions. So I just saw Black pretty much scrubbing it down on their own and trying to figure out who's going where so that when it comes to the first scrum of the game, we don't have to wait for players to figure out where they're going. So, Reagan, what's something you noticed during this first half of the game? Uh, well, like I said, just finding, um, just as the game has gone on, they've become more connected and um, kind of found um, found their strengths and weaknesses of their you know, fellow players um, and teammates. And I think that they've become more connected, which is allowing them to put more pieces together, um, which is, I think, leading to the um, more cohesive and increase in tries towards the end of that first half. I do think that the first half of this game was great, but I think the second half is going to be even better now that all of these players have learned how to work with each other after playing with each other for 20 minutes. So I hope that we will continue to see some great rugby and great team efforts by both teams, starting off with a kick to Black as Black's Taryn Gonzalez from Morris makes her way after the kickoff and out to Black number eight. Again, super strong running, breaking through White's defense. Took like five different attempted tackles before she finally made it down, and she had support there. Yep, and as soon as the ball, pit, ball is picked up, um, White is on it. Yep. All right, looks like they are going to call the high tackle now on Black's... Well, the high tackle happened to Black's... Um, Sosi Horning from Morris. So we are going to take the ball back over there. She's wearing number 11. And we are going to see a toe and go to restart play. We can see Black communicating to each other, trying to figure out who's going to take it. And looks like they are going to choose to kick. It will not find touch, but it will find the hands of White's number three who makes a strong run down the field. They cannot get her down, and she has support right there. Beautiful. And now White continues to make her way down the field. Oh, Black does not have many people on the outside, and Morris's Caitlin Maroney is taking advantage of that. Unselfishly chooses to pass it to number 10. And Just number 10 is able to put it down between the posts. Yep, number 10 is OP's um, Annie Henrich. Ah. She has definitely had a lot of good plays so far this game. I think a lot of players have been able to showcase their true abilities. There's not really a uh, um, star player on either team. Great team effort so far from both black and white. Henrich will take her own kick and it will be unsuccessful. So now I think it's uh, three tries to two. Uh, you know, I think I lost count. Score doesn't even matter in a game like this. This is more for just the experience and for practice. 
Both teams setting up to restart play with another kickoff. Black is trying to figure out who's going to take it. We can see the ref counting players on the field to make sure each team has exactly 15 out there. Sometimes there can be a little miscommunication when it comes to new coaching and different squads. Looks like White has the ball, and that will be Morris's Liz Hansen, presumably wearing number one. Yes, she is. And they will pass the ball out. Smart offload, just not executed well. And the ball will keep moving back, offloaded by Caitlin Maroney. And white number 12 is choosing to cut to the other side of the field, hoping for an opening. She makes her way past the 50 and is stopped. Looks like there's going to be a whistle and a quick start by white, number 12, I think. Yeah, that didn't quite look 10. So All right. White has advantage. Yep, and it's Morris's Caitlin Maroney making her way down the field again. Cuts in from the edge so that she can place the ball down closer to the uprights to make the kick a little bit easier. And now we are going to go, I would guesstimate, four tries to two. But again, score doesn't matter. Um, again, another great team effort. A lot of passes between White's players. And although Caitlin ran it, um, a little far to score her own try. Before that, lots of passes, great communication, team efforts, and support was there. If Caitlin had gotten tackled, support was there. So I love the effort we're seeing from both teams. Seems to be like a pretty fast game so far. A lot of fast-moving people, fast-moving plays. No real stoppages. Has it been a scrum yet? A few lineouts. A couple penalties. Yep. Um, this is the last game of the day, but also only the second game of the day. And quite a few of these girls have not played yet today, so definitely some energy on the field, which we love to see. And Morris' Nessa McLaughlin is going to take the, tick, take the kick for Black, who will gain possession off of their own kick... But it is successful poach by Liz Hansen. And great running. Nobody can get her down. She's just pushing through. There she goes. Liz Hansen, her shorts are falling down. And great offload to number 20. Yesterday, I think we spoke about Liz Hansen for about five minutes on this broadcast, talking about how great of a player she is. She's able to get her shorts back up, thankfully. Unlucky knock on. All right. So we are not going to have our first scrum of the game. Instead, we're going to have a kick again right to our tent. Thank you, Nessa, for kicking it right at our tent. And we will have a line out right in front of us. Um, I don't want to jinx it, but I will say, are we going to have a scrum at all this game? I want to see a scrum, so I'm going to say it anyway. I would love to see how these two teams match up when it comes to packing down. Yep, White's trying to figure out who's going into the line out. This is one of those examples of kind of the miscommunication that happens in Motley games. It seems that every line out so far, White always seems to be late to figuring out who's going in there. Yep, and I've seen, um, I've seen Black before the game and during halftime kind of preparing and setting up who's going to be their forwards, but perhaps... Um, White just is not, um, maybe has not done that. White, perchance during those breaks, was preparing for other points of the game. And looks like Black will keep possession off of their line out, making their way down the field. And picked up off the ruck by Taryn Gonzalez as she runs through most of White's defense and is taken down. And there is black number eight looking for an opening. She does have support there. Number five needs to get a little bit lower in those rucks, but thankfully she was there for support. And yep, eight, that, eight yep. did a good job of um, presenting and kind of 
um, twisting around to yep. save that ball Fighting a to push that ball yep. back. So we finally have a scrum. My words worked. There was a knock on by Black. I am very excited for this scrum because with these forwards, they don't really know each other. I would like to see how they work together in these set pieces. Obviously, we've seen quite a few lineouts, but I want to see how the scrum matches up because this will be a true testament to how these teams communicate because the team who has more trust in each other and their teammates who they may have never played with before is going to be the winner of this scrum. And there is a battle, but it is eventually White's ball. And great running. There's Annie Hendrich again, just breaking through all of Black's defense. And beating through. Yep, she has support there. If she had gotten tackled, 15 and 11 were right nearby, but she is able to put it down right between the uprights. That was a great effort, great run. Just a really good break through that defense. I think Black needs to talk a little bit more on um, their defense so far because they've had a few people break through them so far this game. I still think that it's um, a pretty even game, especially because these girls are playing with each other for the first time. I think that the team that has better communication so far, though, is the white team. Yeah, I think they've just done, at this point, a um, little bit of a better job connecting with each other um, on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. That kick will go out. So we will, there we go, we will have, there we go, we have another line out, looks like this time White is there and ready for it. So it's going to be on the far end of the field. This time it's Black as the one running in last minute to get the numbers in there and the right people for the right positions. And White will throw it in. Not very straight, but ref's not going to call anything. And White chooses to kick. I think that again is number 10, Annie Henrich from Orchard Park. And kicked again. Might be White their 13. They, uh, seem that Black may have knocked it on. Looks like a battle. Does not look like there's any advantage. Nope. Black will regain possession, but way farther back in the field than before. Looks like refs not going to call an obstruction on that. Yesterday we had the refs calling obstructions. Um, a few weeks ago we were at a tournament where none of the refs called obstructions. So, looks like this one is choosing the ladder. Ball is out. Strong running by Black number seven. Not sure which team she plays for. And, yep, there it is. Knocked on. All right, we are going to go with a toe and go for White. Reagan, do you think they're going to kick or run? A run. Well, looks like you're right, even though you answered after they started. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Caitlin Maroney, white number 21 from Morris, trying to stay up after some attempted tackles, but eventually going down. Throughout most of this game, you can see that Black has been putting multiple players into each tackle to make sure that they are taking their um, opponents down. White number five making her way through in great offload. Caitlin Maroney was right there for support. Narrowly catches it. And looks like Black has regained possession, but nobody was there in the ruck. No support with her. White is able to take it back. All right, we have a whistle. Looks like we are going to have a 
Rum? Nope. No. Penalty. All right. And white number 12 is going to make a run for it, and she is able to put it down pretty much near the uprights. I think we're up to uh, maybe five or six tries compared to two or three. Absolutely. But I, 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 I think it's admirable the way that I think Black is still keeping their heads up and still definitely trying. Um, there were a few turnovers in the last few minutes, and there is great effort by both teams, but I think that there is a clear advantage for White, and that will have to be their communication most present in the their offloads on the running. I think their last three tries were scored because of smart offloads. So being there for your teammate is really what's helping them out. And conversion is good. All right, Nessa McLaughlin will kick off again for Black. And it will be caught by white number seven, breaking through tackles, offloading. And white will finally go down, but it is taken by Black. I think Nessa should have passed there before running. She has a lot of support out wide, and White seems to be pretty bunched over here. So we'll see how far they can take it. Looks like another another poach. White is able to get the ball. Seems to be a little bit sloppy here. Another turnover. Wow. You know, I'm not right. seeing much of um. It looks like we have an injury. Um, but on that one, I don't think um, Black set up uh, very quickly off of the um, turnover. Yep, uh, you can definitely, the farther we're getting into this game, the more you can see players walking or jogging to where they're supposed to be on the field instead of running there right away during play. Obviously, that comes with the game. Fatigue is just part of the sport. Um, but there's only a little bit left to play. They should make the most of the time, the minutes they have left. Hopefully, this player who is down is all right. They are taking this break to have some water and hopefully discuss... Um, what they can improve on for the next few minutes, both teams. Looks like it was White's number 20 who is down, but she is starting to get herself back up. And I believe she is choosing to remain in the game, so I'm glad she's okay. Can never be too careful. And we are going to resume play with another scrub. Yep, so you definitely did jinx it this time again. But I'm glad I did, though, because there hasn't been too many in this game so far, and I think that this is going to teach a lot of these girls how to work with people that they don't know in something as intimate as a scrum. All right, it is black scrum. You can see the scrum half talking to the number 10, trying to figure out communication-wise what they're doing after the ball is out. And here it is. Seems to be a little lapse in communication right there. Doesn't look like Darren Gonzalez was ready for that ball. And they are going to try to pass it out, but they're moving it back and not getting much yardage forward. And White, White has been able to take it back. Yep. Little grubber. And picked up by Black. Strong chase on that kick, though. She was there. She made the tackle. All right. Black has the ball. And Taryn Gonzalez from Morris is trying to run down the field. Overpowered in that ruck, though, by White. Black is able to keep their possession, though. And strong running on Black. Attempted offload was a little bit sloppy, but didn't hurt them. I think Black needs to start. Yeah, there we go. Black needs to start running forward a bit. A lot of these players are running sideways looking for an opening, but it's not really working for them. And unfortunately, 
It will be knocked on. We will play the advantage. White will keep the ball. We have White number 20 making her way down the field. That was the player who was down earlier. Glad to see that she is back and better than ever. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's um, there's a lot to be said for um, the ball moving faster than the players. So sometimes it's easier to, or actually most of the time, it's easier to pass it out to the players next to you rather than running um, what we say east and west to find that space. Yep, looks like they were able to touch it down for a try. Um, did not have an eye on who scored that, but surely a team effort by White. Again, they seem to have this communication thing down. A lot of these players look comfortable with each other, and that might be because they play with each other on their home teams, but um, I know that there is a good mix on these teams. And the, the true winner of this game is the teamwork being presented by these girls who have not played together normally. Yeah, you know, White had a little bit of trouble at the start um, to connect, but as soon as they did, they've been just like a freight train. And I love the push of effort we just saw. White running their way back to establish themselves right, ready for the kickoff. Towards the end of the game, obviously you can get a little tired, a little lazy, but I love that they are still trying to show that they are still in it and still hungry for more. Yep, and Black keeping their head up. So I just got word that we have about three minutes left. Would love to see if Black can make an effort to score again. That ball did not go 10. White did not touch it. So looks like the ref is giving them options and they chose to... Scrum, I believe. It seems that way. So, Reagan, when a kickoff does not go 10 and the team who kicks it takes possession, what are the options given? So, you have what they're doing right now is um, what they have the option of a scrum or they can choose to um, re kick. Yep. And that'll usually be the decision of the team, the receiving team, um, mm -hmm. to decide what they want to do. So, um, usually depends on if they've had many scrums in the past. in you know, previously in the game and if they've been successful in them um, or if they think that they have uh, more space and they have, you know, better outside moves to yep. uh, get that to their backs pretty quickly. I think that was a strong decision because um, at least one kickoff of this game, Black was able to kick it and keep possession off the kick. So I think that was smart. However, White did not win that scrum of their choice. So uh, Black had possession, but it was now just now turned over so and now it was turned over again the ball seems to be going back and forth between these teams yep seems to be kind of similar to what we saw towards the end of the um morris and corning game um mm. where just you know a couple sloppy players are yep um, getting it back and forth not a lot of movement onto the ball by black with those recent passes right now it seems to be like they're passing it and the players just standing there for a split second and then on their feet i know one important thing about this game is momentum if you're going to run into somebody tackling you you want to run through them that's exactly what that black player is doing right now she ran onto the ball which means she came into the tackle with momentum and was able to push it back a little bit it's simply physics so i think if these black players can all learn from their teammates and start running onto the ball they'll continue making their way down the field a lot more powerfully than they are right now. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's also very important that um, in order to increase the, that momentum and start off with the momentum, you we want to be running onto the ball, um, even as a, you know, forward, even as a pod player. Um, it is very beneficial to be running on as the uh, nine passes it to you. Yep, unfortunately, there was a turnover right there, and, by, and White will take the ball back and start passing it out, looking for an opening support. Yep, picking it off right from the ruck. White's number five making her way down the field, breaking through all of the defenses and looks like she will run it in to score in that far corner. Yep, kind of like I said um, in the last game, I'd like to see the uh, ball move from the right hand to the outside hand, um, which would be, which would have been the left hand, or yeah, left hand um, would have opened up the right hand for um, a fend to maybe not have been pushed so close to the uh, touch line like she was. So it looks like we will be nearing the end of our game. Kick was not good. Ref is not going to call it here, but I think after this it's going to be next dead ball. Yep. He just 
gave one finger up and then signaled at the end. So it will be, I think, one more play, and then that will be game. Yep. I do not know if this uh, all-player Motley game, if we're going to have players of the match to interview afterwards. I don't think so. Um, I think all the players have... Uh, definitely been able to showcase their skills and individuality while also playing as a team. All of the tries this game have been off of team effort and communication, and that is really what this game is all about. I think the ball, does, once again, does not go 10, but it goes out of bounds beforehand. So it'll be a scrum at the 50. So at the last scrum at the 50 in favor of white, black was able to win it because of um, their strong ability when packing it down. So we'll have to see if that happens again. All right. Big push before the ball is even in. And white wins their scrum, immediately tackled by... Black's Sosie Horning from Morris. 13 runs it up the field. Quick support and a seal by number 19 on white. All right, white continues making their way down the field, passing it out. Definitely some bunching by both teams. There is not a single player within 10 yards of this sideline near us. Looks like they're slowly spreading out. Yep, Black has the ball back. And fighting to present it in the ruck. They're able to keep possession, but not a very smart pass by their nine. However, their number 29, who's been a strong runner all game, is able to break through. Nessa McLaughlin has the ball and passes it out to number, I think she was number was one. Number one yeah. Yep. And Nessa's right there for a quick seal. Yep. Continued to be passed. Strong tackle by White. I think they're pretty Six close to, to touch. 11. So they only have one option in which direction to pass the ball. Great running. Yep. So what it greatly benefits Black to continue this ball if, um, if White were to get this back. Uh, with it being final play and time over, they could just kick it out of bounds, which would end the game. Yep, you cannot end on a penalty, so play will continue. What I noticed right there, um, White does not have a bunch of line speed on defense. Black just passed the ball backwards and was able to gain a lot of yards by just running to meet White where they were. White did not move on defense, and smart play. Nessa McLaughlin will kick it out, and that will not be game. We will have a line out. I think all these players are ready for this game to be over. We can assume that whoever wins this line out is going to try to make it a dead ball again. All right. Black is going to throw it in. Here it is. Up and back. And Black is going to choose to pass it out. Strong rucking right there. They need a few more people down on this end. You can see some of their players running over here to support. That might have been a little forward, but we're not going to call it. Yep, it didn't seem that um that one pass uh, was meant for anyone. Strong run by Black number one, but it is stripped and taken by White's Caitlin Maroney, who plays for Morris. Been saying her name a lot this game. She is a smart rugby player. Yep. Offloads it to number 11. Nice pop off the ground. And White has made their way back down the field with speed. Taken by number five. All right, ref blows his whistle. I did not see what he signaled. White is going to Togo, pass it out. Running east and west again. 
great stiff arm by 19. She will take it up. She's in. And to the middle. Yep. To presumably end the game. Great effort by white number 19. Yep, and even after she was in the try zone to go to the middle to give her kicker a better chance at um, hopefully making that conversion. Mm -hmm. All right, kick is up. And good. So that is game. I don't think we have numbers for the final score. Um, I think both teams did great, and we saw a lot of good sportsmanship out there on the pitch today. Yep, I agree. I hope that all teams that came to this weekend had a great time and were able to learn something in all of their games. I know that when I played yesterday, I definitely learned something. So I hope that everybody had fun, and uh, thank you for having us. We are going to sign off. Reagan, any last words? Nope, it's um, great as an, as an outside person to, uh, or an outside player to come and watch, um, hopefully some future competition. All right, thank you so much for having us, and uh, have a great week, guys.